What is up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today, as you can see, is a back workout with a subscriber. And this is a special one, because, well, first of all, we're doing a full classic back workout with only classic exercises. But the person who is training with me actually donated money to a children's cancer fund an organization and i was uh, there enrolled as a participant for that event uh, to which people could donate and the highest bidder was able to train with me and there was a lot more of that stuff going on with different bodybuilders but i was just one of them so that was pretty cool to be able to be a part of that and this is a training that corresponds to that very event so anyway he had to actually drive two full hours to this gym so we definitely did bump it up a notch during his training we went very heavy full range of motion and he actually trains pretty good you can tell that he's really been working out real good he actually watches my videos as well and learns a lot from it always very nice to hear but as you can see we are starting out with the lat pull down one of my favorite exercises for not only back width but mostly back thickness nowadays as you guys know my weak point is back thickness and doing the lat pull down behind the neck will emphasize trap and upper back development over the lat width if you do it in front of your head it will be lat width first and then the thickness so i want to work on the thickness so i pull it behind my head and his name is shorts by the way and he's pulling the bar quite far behind his neck which is actually the right way to do it you got to be quite flexible to do that and when you do that you actually contract the shoulder blades optimally so if you can try to do it that way for sure and then we went on to do the small grip pull down and to me that is the ultimate combination between the back width development and the back thickness because to me it's kind of literally a combination between the lat pull down and the seated row because you're sitting in a position that you're not completely upright so it's kind of a rowing movement but at the same time you are pulling it down from the top so it's a pull down slash row movement in my honest opinion especially when you do it the right way you will feel the stretch in your lats for the width at the top and you'll feel the contraction in your back in your mid and upper back for the thickness at the bottom so what you really, really want to think about when doing an exercise like this is not the amount of kilograms or pounds you can pull down, but actually the way of performing the exercise. So what you want to do is you want to pull the weight down with your elbows and not your arms. It'll probably look the very same if you record both versions, but trust me, the feeling in your back is so much different. That, you guys, is what mind the muscle connection is all about something that Arnold was very famous for mind muscle connection is everything that bodybuilding is about if you don't have it you cannot contract the proper muscles you can connect with the muscles you want to train it should really be envisioned in your mind so when pulling with your elbows you will contract more and different back muscle fibers and it will be more difficult as well so the weight that you're used to might all of a sudden feel quite difficult to pull and the same goes here at the seated row and this is a quite a nice little handle that i'm holding right there it is not the most narrow one but also not a wide one so it's one in between but because of the shape of the handle i can pull it um you know i can pull my hands beyond my waist so you can really pull it very deep into your back contracting the back to a maximum so this is a true rowing movement for the lower lats and the back thickness in the lower back and that is really what i want to work on as well that christmas tree those spinal erector muscles need to grow beyond imagination so that on stage they will show and they will be a strong point rather than a weak point 
From a classic back workout, what cannot be missed? A barbell row. We had to do this with a smaller barbell because the large barbell was in use. But this barbell is still pretty nice as long as it's straight. You can pretty much do the same exact movement. But just with a little less kilograms, a little less weight as the barbell doesn't weigh as much. Well, what you want to do is drop the bar down, stand about 45 degrees. So 90 degrees actually turns it into a bent over row instead of a barbell barbell row I really like to you know dissect those two exercises really make them different so this is a barbell row you're able to pull more weight compared to a bent over row so what you want to do is drop it past your knees at least get the stretch in the entire back don't neglect that full range of motion and then pull it towards your belly button or when wearing a belt pull it towards your belt and really try to touch your lower abs with the barbell the moment that it's becoming too difficult to touch your belt or your lower abs it's a too heavy of a weight so you gotta lower it down and in my opinion a lot of people go way too heavy on an exercise like this even if you do it 45 degrees or parallel to the ground no matter how you do it you cannot really go extremely heavy um, if you want to do it the correct way with the correct range of motion the correct form only Ronnie Coleman can do that and still develop an amazing back but hey we all know that he right now doesn't really have a comfortable experience in terms of his back right now so always stay with a full range of motion and with the weight you can do because your muscles have no idea how much weight you're pulling they only feel the amount of effort they are exerting so make that effort count and then the last exercise for the pure back to really stretch out those muscle fibers after getting a nice pump from the previous exercises is the famous dumbbell pullover one of my favorite exercises to do with this one the heavier you can go the better while of course maintaining form you don't want to use your triceps to move the weight because a lot of people like to do that kind of turn into a, some kind of tricep extension you really want to move only the dumbbell and keep your arms locked in position that way you force your back to do all the work your serratus to do all the work which are the muscles that look like ribcage muscles attached to your lats making your front lats thicker but this also is very good for back width because you really pull apart those muscle fibers when you're stretching at the bottom which is why I tell you to go as heavy as possible as you can go to pull apart those muscle fibers to the maximum of their ability to rip them apart so they can resurrect again for the next workout just a little bit bigger just a little bit stronger that is what bodybuilding is all about and usually as you guys know I like to combine the rear delts with back because you already worked the rear delts especially when doing rowing movements and let pull downs behind the neck you really work the rear delts already so to finish them off we are doing one exercise like this one the reverse flies or the rear delt flies with dumbbells and I like to do a lot of volume with this because if you go too heavy you will simply make it some kind of a shrug using your traps too much so if you go nice and light you will be able to contract those rear delts without actually activating too much of the traps and that is why volume is important to really be able to do a light weight but still drive enough blood into that muscle because to me when you are able to get a pump in a specific muscle you're able to make it grow by driving nutrients to that muscle as long as you destroy it giving your body the signal to make it grow for next time so basically what I'm doing here is I'm explaining how we used to do a barbell curl and that I didn't go all the way up in the past. I did of course develop pretty good bicep with it but if you want to maximize your potential, if you want to maximize the effect of every single workout, you got to know how to most effectively, most efficiently perform an exercise and in my opinion this is the way for barbell curls so you go all the way down stretching the biceps so this is the most important part you go all the way up and if you look at my arms they don't stay completely straight it actually looks like my front delts are helping my biceps but this is not the case just try it with an empty bar guys just try it promise me and trust me that you will because if you do you will automatically go upwards 
in the exact same way that you see here. You will move your upper arm in order to contract the bicep to a maximum of its ability. Your body is not a rigid machine, it works in different ways, so you cannot expect it to move in a perfect straight line. Muscles work together automatically, so if you want to fully contract the biceps, you will automatically pull your upper arm forward a little bit in order to do so and this way you don't have to go as heavy because as you can see it is already getting quite difficult to curl this barbell while there is not a lot of weight on it while my biceps aren't the smallest so this is the way that you can actually you know find out whether you're doing an exercise correctly if it is getting more difficult while feeling all the tension in the exact muscle that you are training because basically what you're doing is you are extending the range of motion and by extending that you extend the time under tension and we all know that time under tension is one of the causes one of the rules of making your muscles grow of hypertrophy or hypertrophy however you want to say it so you extend the time under tension therefore actually extending progressive overload on some parts of the movement because you're not used to doing that weight at the very top of the movement. So every time you go heavier, you will get a signal of, whoa, what is happening here, guys? I'm feeling an incredible contraction where I never felt it before with this weight. So let's make those muscle fibers grow. That is what you want to happen. And then this exercise, one of my favorites to build the bicep thickness from the front, the rope hammer curls. So if you look at my biceps closely, if you dare, you can see a bicep split on the side and right below it, there is the brachialis. That is the muscle that actually pushes underneath your biceps and beside it as you can see and if you develop it enough you will actually make the bicep wider and look thicker more 3d from the front and even when doing a back double biceps the details on your biceps on your arms will be that much greater so it to me you know if you have thin biceps you should do hammer curls or these rope hammer curls and the difference between regular hammer curls and these is the tension is completely different. I actually prefer these curls because the tension at the top is that much stronger. And you can also pick an exact weight that you want. Sometimes with hammer curls, you kind of cheat a little bit trying to get the weight up and the tension disappears from the biceps. But here, as you can see, if you look closely once again, you can see that the biceps don't lose tension at all, which is what you want guys, as I just said, time under tension is very important. Destroying those muscles at every inch of the movement, of the range of motion. And I actually in the past used to hurt my biceps because I was able to do a lot of weight with hammer curls. So I went to about 30 kilograms and it went pretty easily. But with one single silly mistake of turning your hands outwards or inwards just a little bit too much, you kind of set yourself up for injury and I did and for months I felt that injury nagging me for every bicep and back training so I will not risk that again so only with the rope hermicles I can go pretty heavy and of course we finish off with a concentration curl so we started off with a basic bicep builder then we did a bicep thickness builder and now we're doing a bicep peak builder and that is how I like to design my bicep workouts to really hit every single angle that you can so you hit the outside of the head the inside of the head the brachialis and the totality of the biceps doing as much weight as you can with a, as good form as possible that is how you make muscles grow you guys so the concentration curl really builds the peak what you want to do is keep your arm pretty much straight and when pulling when curling you want to curl that dumbbell to the other arm to the shoulder of the other arm and that way you automatically build up that peak anyway guys this was the training of today and don't forget there is an Christmas sale going on on VintageGenetics.com so if you are interested use the code Xmas 15 for 15% 15 off of every single item on the store and also every single red colored item 
including the red t-shirts and the Bordeaux hoodie that I was wearing in this video, is automatically five euros off. And on top of that, you can stack that Xmas 15 code for 15% off. So if you are interested in vintage genetics clothing, try it out, use the codes and enjoy your VG gear. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching and do not forget to stay golden. It was very nice to hear. But as you can see, we are starting out with a lat pull down, one of my favorite exercises for not only back width, but mostly back thickness nowadays. As you guys know, my weak point is back thickness and doing the lat pull down behind the neck will emphasize trap and upper back development over and I was uh, there enrolled as a participant for that event uh, to which people could donate and the highest bidder was able to train with me and there was a lot more of that stuff going on with different bodybuilders but I was just one of them so that was pretty cool to be able to be a part of that and this is a training that could back workout with a subscriber and this is a special one because well first of all we're doing a full classic back workout with only classic exercises but the person who was training with me actually donated money to a children's cancer fund an organization response to that very event so anyway he had to actually drive two full hours to this gym so we definitely did bump it up a notch during his training we went very heavy full range of motion and he actually trains pretty good you can tell that he's really been working out real good he actually watches my videos as well and learns a lot from it all What is up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding. And today, as you can see, is a 